Here's the top 10 things to know about Yoimiya. She's your classic girl next door, Hana Mizaka born and raised. She's everyone's friend and an excellent conversationalist. She knows how to draw people out, make them feel comfortable and heard. Every granny wants to invite her to tea, every parent wants to spill the tea on their family life, and every child sees her as a big sister, the town best friend. She's also kind of a spaz. Sometimes people worry about interrupting Yoimiya's work, but she actually loves talking to people. She can't focus without it. She'll talk to customers to understand the right mood for delivering a kick-ass firework, then reward herself for a job well done by idling with them after delivery. She goes door-to-door -door around the neighborhood gifting trinkets and just visiting. She thrives on being with others. She needs it. She also enjoys the freedom of a whenever-she-wants work schedule. She'll spend the day chatting with her friends, then work through the night. Or maybe sleep until midnight and then go out on an adventure. People have seen her sleeping in trees and stopped water wheels after finding inspiration in a sunrise. She gets her work done, but whenevs, and she appreciates that, which I relate to on a soul-deep level. When she got her vision, she somehow didn't even know that visions are important? It showed up while she was working, she used it as a lighter, and then tossed it in a storeroom until her dad explained how important it is. To this day, she doesn't understand how someone ordinary like her got a vision. In addition to the fireworks she's known for, you can get trinkets from the fireworks shop. Just any random knickknacks that she experimented with, such as goldfish fireworks. They swim around, emit multicolored lights, and spit bubbles, which I could totally understand with a couple of LEDs, a little motor, and a 3D printed casing, but how in Tame Vot she managed that shit, I cannot begin to contemplate. She also does orders on request, with very little expectation of payment, just for the joy of helping people solve their problems. She is lactose intolerant, can handle it cooked into other things, but a no milk by itself. Like many of our playable characters, Yoimi is a master craftsman, such that she could create a fireworks display that viewed from one angle looks like a map of Inazuma City, but when viewed from Tenchukaku looks like the Electro Mitsudomo. Feats like these have gotten her the nickname Queen of the Summer Festival. Now, it's probably just for the stories and not actually possible, but I couldn't help but stare intently at these images and turn on my spatial reasoning skills to find any way that you could achieve both in the same artwork with an angling trick. I could not, but please let me know if you see it. She also made many of the fireworks used at the Lantern Rite Festival. Beto brought them in. It's illegal under the Sokoku Decree, but her ideal that there can't be a festival without fireworks is far more important than silly things like laws. <laughs> this is my favorite one. She collects candies and puts them in a box that looks just like her hair accessories. Every time she sees a joyous occasion, she eats one of the candies, and she uses the sweet depletion rate as a measure of community happiness. Sometimes, she'll wear it instead of the actual normal hair pieces and makes it a guessing game. Is my hair full of candy today? This girl has a really great life perspective. She speaks plainly because you can't get to know anyone if you don't talk to them. And if you do talk to them and there are misunderstandings, you can just use more words to correct them. So just talk it out, guys. Communication. She also makes children custom fireworks in exchange for bringing her anything they think is a treasure, just because they interpreted an old folk song as related to her and came to her with the expectation. She plays along because childhood experiences become irreplaceable treasures, and she wants to give them good memories to look back on. That's also how she sees eternity in fireworks. The show itself is transient, but the memory of the occasion is everlasting, and by taking their unique note back to the shop, people can revisit the feelings of that memory anytime. It's very fitting for the whole memory thing going on in the Inazuma Archon quests. Finally, as a bonus number 11, here's how she gets along with other characters. She and Ayaka have a good working relationship, but aren't close. They just collaborate a lot while planning festivals. She competes with Arataki Ito in children's games, and has a good relationship with Toma, goes to him whenever there's a matter she can't settle, because that boy can scheme. She's friends with Beto, who, as mentioned, helps her illegally export shit. She surprised Beto once with a firework shaped like a ship when the Alcor was just setting sail. She worries about Sayu because she always looks down and wants to take her to a festival. She gets in trouble with the Tenryo Commission a lot for public safety hazards and likes it when she gets to talk to Sara because at least she hears her out. Sarah's fair. 
finally, she has absolutely no relationship with Klee whatsoever. But we must have told her about her, because she pointed out the elephant in the room that isn't anyone in Mondstadt worried about letting a kid play with explosives? For more Genshin lore, I always appreciate your likes and subscribes, and especially your comments, questions, concerns, criticisms, and requests. Thanks for watching, and if you like what I do, consider hitting me up in Discord or Twitch down in the description. Bye bye